Hello everyone, this is Jeff of Tal Player Mouse. Today we have a wooden slug with a steel core in it. These were sent to us by Sar Tal of Israel. Sar designed these to fit into the shot cup of a shotgun wadding. Everything fits really well, but I have a lot of doubts about these things because, hey, they're made out of wood and I think they're going to just splinter when we shoot them. Now you may remember these slugs, these were made out of candy by the same guy, Sar, and he is a candy maker. But I also thought these would shatter when we shot them from the nearly 10,000 G's of acceleration that's occurring inside the barrel of the shotgun. The 3D printed slugs that we shot last week, well they shattered. It's a testament to how much force these things are under, but remarkably these slugs, these candy slugs, held together and they flew exceptionally well. Now the producers for the TV show Outrageous Acts of Science on the Science Channel, I don't get that channel unfortunately, but they thought this was pretty remarkable too. When the episode comes out and you see it, let me know and it, let me know if it's cool or not because I'll probably never see it. Now it's time to test out the wooden slugs. Do you think they're going to hold up and do you think we'll be able to hit anything with them? These are just a viable, will they even work shot? Now I expected these slugs to shatter, so I loaded some with the steel facing backwards thinking they would be a little stronger that way. But as you can see, even with spin stabilization, the slug was still a little wobbly going down range. Okay, this is metal in the front. Metal in the front. Okay, just so we know. Okay, I'm ready. Ow. With the steel facing forward and more weight forward, the slug still held together and it flew much better. So once again, I was proven wrong, but hey, I love being surprised and proven wrong. So let's continue with the test. And that one is... uh. Steel forward? Yes. Okay. Okay, steel forward, fully rifled barrel at a deck of cars at 10, five yards. Five yards. Okay, I'm ready when you are. All right, let's see what they do. Gonna aim a little low because they shoot high. Yep. Well, it, it, aimed, it went low. It went low. <laughs> when you use a scope at that close of range, that's what happens. But. Look at that, the slug went right through that 2x4, wood going through the wood. That one I aimed low because I thought they were going to rise. Yeah. It didn't. It's because of that scope, I think. I'm going to go dead on here. Okay. That's going to take the safety off. Oh, beautiful. Error, error. <laughs> yeah, that one it, it hit, but it's not it true. Hit. Uh, my point of aim was right here. He seemed to want to shoot low right. This is the first shot. I was aiming here thinking they were going to rise and it hit low right. Right through the 2 by 4 That's wood on wood crime there. It went right through the whole deck, it looked like. Yep. Not bad for a wooden slug. Now honestly, I don't know what we were thinking shooting at only five yards, that's just silly. But this shot, he adjusted the aim and that slug went right through that deck of cards. Last week, we were having all kinds of weird problems with our chronograph and I was really worried that it was broken after using it like one day. Okay, wet magazine test. We'll see if we can get a chronograph reading this time. Are you over it? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm ready when you are. Alright, here we go. What kind of speed? 1466. Four, oh, that's more than I thought. Already shot that before with that uh, Lehigh defense. Yeah, defense went in here. I think our orange dot was right about here. Yeah, yeah. And I was aiming because those were shooting low left or low right. I was aiming right here. Okay. Try to bring it in there. 
it didn't go through or anything, did it? I don't think that went through there. Okay, no. it's busted up in there probably. Got two shots out of the magazines at least. Open up this little package. See what we got. Yeah, didn't go very deep. There's uh, one. Starting to see some wood splinters here. Third round. There it is. There it a piece, is. good chunk of it. Oh wow. Most of it's there. I don't know about the steel core. Steel core might have kept moving. Yeah. Let's see if it's in here. Nothing there. Wow, that kept on going. That went pretty deep. Wait, is that no, is this paper? Wow. Still traveling. Let's go back here a few. Oh. <laughs> there it is. Wow. There it is. It went about three quarters of the way through it. So it kind of acted like a non discarding Sabo, I guess. Very cool. Yeah, I save that sucker. That's a lot deeper penetration than I expected. You know, so the, the wood didn't go far, but that seal. Stopped in uh, what number three, number four? Something like that, yeah. And then I'm not going to count them. Yeah. So it it it, it went about all, more than three quarters of the way through. I think to count that high, I'd have to unzip. <laughs> I was expecting these slugs to be traveling around 1,200 feet per second, which is what the shells were originally rated for. So it was a surprise that they were traveling much faster than that at 1466. Another steel forward piece, rifled barrel. Okay, I'm ready when you are. All right, here we go. Wow, 1366. Yep. So far we're having excellent results using the fully rifled barrel getting really good spin stabilization and the slugs are flying just as good as a factory slug. But how will these perform out of a smooth bore shotgun with no spin at all? Wow, I saw a dust kick up down the stream. Well, it flew pretty well. I expected to just tumble, to be honest with you. And look at those sparks coming out the back. That's very cool. As we found it, right? This is as we walked up on it. Part of our slug man there. Let me see it. Is there any clues on that? It looked like, there's the back side. It looks like it hit more or less nose first. Well, we've got a nice round half circle. It looks like it hit pretty much nose first. Yeah. And this broke out. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Nice clean circle. That's cool. Pretty accurate without spin. That's at part. 10 yards? 10 yards. And that was pretty much point of aim, and that was a 20 inch smooth bore. Yeah. Steel core kept on going for <laughs> 50 yards and hit the dirt. All right, not bad. Very cool. Okay, we got the backwards, the backwards uh, slug through the rifle barrel. We'll see if we have enough stabilization and all that. Okay, I'm ready. All right, here we go. Wow. Well, we wanted to give the backwards slug another chance, and this time it actually flew straight and true. You would think the ballistic gel would be kind of gentle on a round like that, but it's a pretty abusive target to shoot at. Yeah. There's a point of impact. Where were you aiming on that one? Kind of in here. I wanted to keep it off on the right a little bit, but I didn't know where it was going to go, so I tried to stay center of the two. Okay. We weren't sure 
That's why we put two of them up there. I wasn't sure, you know, it's like, okay, we could maybe increase the chance of hitting something. There. It's just about point of aim. Yeah. But look at that, splinters. And I'm not sure what kind of uh, wood that is. You have any idea? It's kind of a reddish wood. Reddish, like almost a mahogany. What do they grow in uh, Israel? <laughs> See what the back side looks like here. Oh, we got wood poking out the back even. Wow, that's a nasty injury there, folks. It's not so much what the slug does to the gel sometimes, it's what the gel does to the slug. Wow, that's nasty. Just, just And the steel core kept on going. Well, that hit about, what, 100 yards down there? In the yeah, there. yeah, it did. Man, you imagine your surgeon trying to dig that out of a body? Yeah, yeah. Wow. You're gonna do more damage to get, getting it dug out than the slug did. <laughs> yeah. That's it. awesome Just though. Finish. That was the backwards one. Yep. Very cool. You see here in the wood, here's where the metal plug was. And in that round, we had it in the reverse. Yep. So it hit this direction. It, it, I think they need that forward balance to make it fly true. But we wanna see how Things work other ways, you know. Ten yards, it was on pretty much. That would be target. a good home defense round. <laughs> okay, I'm rolling. So what are we gonna shoot? All the... right, we're gonna try it at uh, 330 YouTube yards. <laughs> uh, actually, 33 yards measured. And that's the backwards one. This is the backwards one. Okay. So we'll see what's gonna do downrange. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. It hit the target. High right. About one o'clock. Yep. Okay, now he's gonna shoot the normal forward, steel forward one. Forward facing, whatever you wanna say. <laughs> okay. Ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Same point of if oh. Very close. Even though the point of impact on both these shots were very close, you can see that the backward slug must have hit uh, sideways and keyholed while the forward one went clean through. They are grouping fairly well for a homemade wooden slug. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. Well, that's very cool, man. I'm glad we were able to finally shoot those for SAR. And that the candy slug video will be on uh, the Science Channel sometime soon. I'm not sure, was it uh, Amazing Acts of Science or something like that? Mm. Yeah. 2018 is gonna be the year that most of your favorite channels who are not supported by their viewers on Patreon are gonna call it quits. Last year we saw a lot of uh, very popular channels calling it quits, uh, like Richard Ryan from Full Mag, uh, Matt from Matt B 2099, and so many others. It's it's sad. YouTube just does not like us. Uh, every year the earnings that we get are cut in half, basically. Last year I was probably making about five dollars an hour off of YouTube, believe it or not. Uh, this year. Come January 1st, that has been cut in half. I'm making about $2.50 an hour now. Now, a lot of people think, oh, he's got almost a million subscribers. He must be rolling in the money. That's not the case. Um, in fact, the smaller channels tend to get more Patreon support than the larger ones because of that mindset. Now, there are some channels that have about 6,000 Patreon supporters that are pulling in about a quarter million dollars a year just from donations. Now, they were the smart ones. Uh, I should have started this a lot sooner, and a lot of other channels should have started them too, when we started seeing the writing on the wall. So if you don't want to donate to us, that's fine, but if you have a favorite YouTube channel that you don't want to see go away, and they're asking for help on Patreon, go to that page, see how many patrons they have. Now, if they just have a handful, they don't have 5,000 or 10,000 people donating 3 or $4 each, which is the average donation size. 
consider donating to these guys first because they're going to be the first ones that drop out. Now, just to give you an idea how much we earn, it takes about 100,000 views currently to earn about $25. That's, <laughs> that's insane. Just a few years ago, getting 100,000 views would earn you between $200 and $500. Now, I'm not sure how much longer we're going to last. I'm currently trying to shoot all the stuff that people have sent me um, and I have stopped accepting any uh, you make it we shoot it stuff from people just so I can get everything shot and I'm committed to do my end of the bargain and get their stuff shot I very much appreciate the support we've gotten from patreon and I hope that we can continue making videos in 2018